Welcome to the Nonprofit Exchange Podcast. Stories by leaders for leaders to help you raise the bar on your own excellence to release the potential inside of you. Now, here's today's podcast. Welcome to today's episode of the Nonprofit Exchange, hosted by Center Vision Leadership Foundation. I'm Hugh Ballou, founder and president. Center Vision is like in music, ensemble. It's like ensemble. It's the synergy of what we do together. And we create that synergy in our organization, our teams, our boards, our volunteers, our staff, because we have a vision. And also because we step up as a leader. My guest today is a very special friend, a prolific author and, and filmmaker. He's got over a hundred creative projects. Phil Cosano, welcome to the Nonprofit Exchange. And please tell people a little bit about who you are and why you do this work. Good morning, Hugh. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, greetings to everyone out there in the ether. Yeah, I'm Phil, Phil Kuzno. I grew up in Detroit in one of probably the last families in America, maybe the world, in the 1950s, who actually wrote, read books together out loud. But even more than that, we would read, with my father in the lead, books from Homer to Mark Twain, and many things in between. But then my dad had a, a pedagogy, that fancy old word for a teaching style, in which he would take us to a museum or an art exhibition or a ballpark that helped elucidate what we had just read in the book. So if we read Moby Dick, he would take us in the car, the old Ford station wagon from Detroit, all the way to New Bedford, Massachusetts to go to the home of Melville. And there is something about that that has gotten into me so that I read prodigiously, but then I write and then I teach in the places that I read about. So I think this is an echo of growing up in Soul City, America, Motown, Detroit, in which I grew up French Catholic, but so I grew up with a sense of spirituality that everything in the world had some kind of spirit or soul. But I was, I was also a ball player, and I, I loved music all along. My life since leaving Detroit has been a kind of weave of looking for soul in art but also soul in real life, political work, the environmental work, and it all comes together with a notion about leadership. I was captain of my high school basketball team, co-captain, uh, captain of the track team, and I learned early on, although I was very, sh very shy and quiet growing up on the streets of Detroit, that leadership means a great deal. It helps not only to organize our community, but also to infuse our lives and our relationships with soul and spirit. Leadership without soul is narcissistic. It's power mongering. Leadership with soul means that you're doing something for more than just yourself or even the, the betterment of your business. What it means is getting in touch with the center, what is real in life. That's a great, is Ray Charles. Ray Charles talking about the soul, getting back to the real thing, getting back to the real soul. So I found myself writing and filming and photographing all around the world, looking for the soul of cultures, looking for the soul of history, which is a fancy, but also funky way, as we would have said growing up in Detroit, of finding out what's the real thing? What's the real thing here? with one added element. This morning, because I've also written two or three books on the origin of words, what words deeply mean in their roots. That's why we talked about the roots of words. So what does leadership actually mean in Western culture? I found out this morning, just before I came on here, that it's a thousand year old word. It goes back to old English and it originally meant to go forth with other people to seek a common goal, and for the leader itself to guide. So not just just me pulling you along because I'm inspired and I'm messianic and so on, but for the common wheel, a beautiful old word. 
the benefit of everybody. Why would this mean something now? Here, I just turned 70, but I have five more books in the works. I'm working on three more films. I'm more infused than ever. Why? Because I believe that as the Atlantic Monthly, that prestigious magazine, which is 150 years old or so, wrote just a few months ago, we are conceivably, arbitrarily, or arguably the most innovative, inventive, futuristic culture in human history, bar none. We are also the loneliest culture in human history, where most people, especially men, do not have friends after the age of 40. Women feel alone, left behind in different parts of the country and so on. How can we heal this great divide while moving into a future? We do it with soulful leadership.